All right, let me know if a bear is coming up behind me. <laughs> Man, I, I hiked up here literally over 20 years ago with a guy to get a huge bear. It's ridiculous how time flies. And uh, so I'm on my, last night on the boat, there's no internet, no service at all there. No TV, no nothing. So I'm in bed going over my, uh, just looking at my photo albums and shit and looking at the notes and organizing my phone. <clears throat> I realized that I've totally misplaced them, but I've been sent, like I have a couple friends of mine that read the comments a lot and they'll screenshot stuff and send it to me on the YouTube channel and other places and they send me screenshots of people who share experiences in the comment section and sure enough you know when you copy text with your phone it copies text from a photograph so you can take a photograph with text on it and it copies that text so I went through my entire phone and I found a whole bunch of them I saved them so this might be kind of different so I'm gonna share them right now before I carry on along the coast some more hopefully you can hear me now, where is one? All right, here's one here, you ready? This is titled, red, <laughs> now. This is titled, Evening Steve, from up in the Yukon, 19 miles from the Alaska-Yukon border, and I am First Nations Elder. With a bit of information on what the three of us hear and saw, their home being built. A few years ago when my sister-in-law was still alive and we were out hunting in fall time down the Alaska Highway from our homes, we were getting ready to leave when she said that there was a cave on the side of mountain that wasn't there before. She passed binoculars to her husband, my younger brother, then on to me. Yes, there it was. But how did she see that hole among a huge mountain, a bunch of spruce trees and with poplar, birch trees and willows galore and it was in a very tiny clearing. The next time we saw the hole was so much bigger. It showed definitely that there was more work done and even being worked on. The next time there were many trees put up in front of the cave to be hidden from us on the highway. Later on, we stopped at a place on the highway, crossed it, and as we were standing on hill, a very loud hollering was coming from across the lake. We kept it up and as we listened to it, when finally stopped, I figured, I figured I shouted that, I figured it, I shouted that hard and long, I would have to, okay, so for him to shout that hard and long, he would have to take three breaths to, to keep up with that shout. My conclusion is it had killed a bull moose and was shouting to tell those at home to come carry the meat home. What do you think? I left quite a bit out, but can fill you in later if you want, Steve. Respectfully and truthfully, Stan Peters. That's crazy, Stan. That sounds familiar. Maybe I read this before, I don't know. I hope you're still following the channel. I don't even know when this was sent to me. Uh, do I think they're gonna holler to each other to come pack meat? Mm, something tells me they don't have to do that to communicate myself, so I don't know. And also from eyewitness accounts of them literally throwing a bull elk over the shoulder, cut the muzzle with one hand and book with it. I don't think they'd have any problem moving a bull moose by themselves either. But, please, if you're listening, if you would or if you could, possibly, investigate that cave. Or, if you can find somebody who has a drone, at least fly a drone up to the cave. And see if you can get somebody who knows how to do that and videotape it. I think that would be absolutely interesting. What a crazy find. What a crazy thing to see, just like you said. How do you spot that, right? Random. I hope, Stan, you're still uh, with us, following this. The sun's kind of behind me, it might be killing the camera. No bear behind me yet, keep me posted. It's your buddy of mine who's just telling me he had a bad time with the bear in here, he's getting uh, clams with his wife years back, and there's a bear in here, get him serious attitude, wouldn't budge. Now listen to this one. This is titled, or this is from a person that calls himself a Viking robot. My hunting partner and I had two experiences with the Sasquatch, including getting good pictures of their footprints. 
Our experiences were a couple of weeks apart, yet did not keep us from going back into those mountains. We've been back there several times since and haven't had any more encounters there in 15 years or so. Pretty wild how there is talk of this sudden fear or dread feeling, but has anyone else felt a sudden calm feeling? Not just calm, but a euphoric calm like a dopamine rush. That's the feeling I had twice after both experiences. There's one spot I walked through in one of my hunting spots, and every time I go past there, I feel uneasy to this day. Not sure if it's the terrain or if there's something lurking up there. All right, uh, the calmness. Dr. Yez, myself, and Dr. John Benernagel spoke to a guy from Kamloops who had one of these things literally 20 yards from him behind a tree, peeking out on him, peeking back and peeking out and peeking back, and uh, he had his gun up on it, and he said that all of a sudden he felt an absolute calm. He said he felt instantly calm, everything's going to be okay. And I remember him, vividly remember him telling us that. I'm sure other people are going to chime in. Now remember you guys, this is all from screenshots of comments on my social media and YouTube. Said to me. Listen to this one, here's another one. The summer 95, I worked as an engineering intern for WADNR. One of the senior field foresters I got to work with that summer was tuned into the wild ones. He told me of spotting a trackway from a helicopter. It went several hundred yards across a glacier above Darrington, Washington. The boulder-strewn snowfield was overshadowed by a cliff-faced ridge that was riddled with caves. He said they sat the helicopter down, took pictures, and measured the tracks. He said the tracks were real fresh, 20 inches long, and an amazing 6 to 7 feet apart. The strange part was the tracks had stopped and disappeared in the middle of the glacier. I remember thinking that that was really effing strange and it spooked me because I hero worship this guy. I was already a convinced knower. I just, I was just inexperienced and didn't understand about when things go sideways and get strange. All right. Whoever told me this, if you're still listening, please, please, if you can, reach out to that senior field forester and see if maybe possibly that man would maybe send us, share those photographs with us. Because that is something that amazes me, that particular point that's been shared dozens and dozens of times and of tracks disappearing. All right, that's something, that's a, a major point that I would like to make very popular for people to hear. That's very important. If you really want to get your head out of the sand and really look into the honest truth of the shit that's going on. That would be uh, really cool if, or even if that person may be possibly following this channel now, and obviously this, this uh, story is going to hit home, obviously, and it would be even very interesting if they took the photographs from the helicopter before they landed. That's something everybody would be absolutely curious to see. If you could. If you're still following, I hope so. Here's another one. This is titled, Riot. 2004, Colorado. I was elk hunting in the Wemenuchi at 12,000 feet, watching a bull about 75 yards away. All the hair stood up on my neck. I turned around and looked up towards the top of Cimarona Peak and saw a huge hairy arm loft a large rock towards me. I was stunned. I couldn't understand what was happening until I saw another one come down towards me. I immediately left the area and went back to camp. I didn't tell the others, but I slept with my seven mil mag next to me in my sleeping bag. The single most scariest night of my life. No doubt. <laughs> a big, huge, hairy arm lobbing boulders. That's basically every hunter's nightmare to witness firsthand, right? Nobody wants that. Another screenshot. Here's another one. Um, oh, no, this is an email. Darn, I wonder if we got past. I thought I had a whole bunch of those saved. What's this one? Facebook. Okay, this might have been a screenshot from a Facebook comment. Mark, this is red. 
Shane Nastrom, logger with me when I saw the tracks. I told him to come to my side of the truck and have a look. As he rounded my truck, he turned completely ghost white like he was instantly sick and said, let me tell you something about what you're looking at. Apparently not the first time he's seen this. He was 80. I don't know if that microphone was going to pick that, up, that sound up or not. Whatever. Uh, sorry. He was 80. He was 80 now and was a logger his whole life. Please see attached photos from today. All right. Um, I just did a screenshot of that text, so I don't know if that person is listening. Send it again. Send it again. Here's another one. This is from, Mark, this is red. This is from Ron Buckner. Impact would be my choice also. While hunting, I watched one take out an elk by simply clubbing it straight to the side of the head. It chased it down, grabbed its rack, and simply swung it once, and the animal collapsed. He shouldered the whole animal, at least 500 pounds, and he turned and looked straight at me for what seemed like an hour and a half. It wasn't. He turned and went straight up a really steep hill. None of us would ever try on a dare. In 20 seconds, he was gone. I had no fear at the time, no inclination to raise my rifle, and realized at the time that the death of the elk was far more humane than the bullet I would have had for it. And that was it. That's another screenshot. That's a holy shit story. Another elk hunter, right? Dozens and dozens of elk hunters experience these things. There's another one, another screenshot of a comment, comment from somewhere. That's all I can tell you. Kevin Clemens, C-L-E-M-M-O-N-S. I was around 12 and had a juvenile, I think. I was, I was six foot. What? I was six foot, 215, and it was about my size. I kept getting a flicker out of the corner of my I, it had the sun to its back, and every time it peeked around a tree, it blocked the sun. Next time it went behind the tree, I looked at the tree thinking it was a squirrel. To my surprise, it was a hairy person, his mouth open wide, knowing it was caught. It started to run away. I thought, great, it's leaving. Then it turned, went to all fours, and started running toward my direction. That would suck shit. I raised my 14 single barrel shotgun, put the bead right on his face, and I told myself, if it runs towards me, I'm getting it in the face. It's getting it in the face. And it turned its head sideways, snarled at me, like it read my mind, and took off the other way. And I took the gun off him and released the hammer. It was gone in two huge jumps, well over 10 feet in the air, 30 yards long. Its hair was the color of blonde to yellow grass in the field. And that's where I lost it. Another holy shit. It's crazy. Here's another one. Kevin Williams. Steve, I'm curious whether or not any of the members of the round table have spoken about experiences on Mount St. Helens after the eruption in 1980. 
We hired a crane operator in 1985 who had worked up there on the recovery process. We were, we were talking during lunch one day and I asked about the critters up there. I was thinking deer and elk and he began describing an agreement he had to sign when he left Corn Zellerbox Employment. That's C-O-R-W-N dash Z-E-L-L-E-R-B-A-C-H-S Employment. He told me that many people would be shocked if they knew that if they knew what quote animals end quote had been recovered on the mountain. I tried many times to get to him talk, tried to get him to talk, and he always told me he wasn't willing to take that risk. It makes me believe there was more to this agreement and who was involved when you talk about the suits, it brings back those memories. Okay, hold on one second. Man, every time I go home, something happens at the farm. Every single time. Just the horse tried to break into the goat pen and shredded. Sarah's got to go to work and all hell's breaking loose. But anyways, getting back to this one. Sorry. Uh, if the person that wrote this, Kevin Williams, if you, I would love to get a hold of somebody, excuse me, anybody, who claims to have signed some kind of a waiver to keep it secret about seeing a, a hairy covered being. Um, I'd love to talk to them and give them the confidence to say F you to whoever they sign that document with, especially today, especially with the Western leadership of today. How do you have any respect at all for the government today? How? Any at all? I would love to uh, talk to anybody who's signed some kind of a waiver who has serious information about that and talk them into spell it and let them know that they have a huge crowd of people behind them supporting them and have their back, right? At Mount St. Helens thing, there is far too many emails that have come in from far too many different places with the same topic and the same facts shared, right? Interesting one. Here's another one. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot, I guess these titles are going to be the names of the, the handles of the people online from their comments. This is from Delta Echo. Hi, Steve. Speaking of a very large sabe, not enough room for full story here. Nevertheless, while my wife, ex now, were hunting in Wintas, way back when, that's Utah, I'd returned to my truck and found signs of one having been present. Not to mention my 20 ounce soda that I left on the tailgate was gone. Anyway, I looked for presence of another vehicle passing and saw none. No one else was in the area and only one way in and out. Anyway, as I scouted around, there were a group of trees next to my truck. Looking up, I noticed three clean tree breaks of approximately 4 to 5 inch trunks at approximately 12 to 14 feet up. The breaks were done while we are in the woods. I remember hearing it, thinking, who the hell is hatching slash chopping wood this early in the middle of nowhere. The brakes pointed in the direction we had gone into the woods. I remember thinking either something climbed up those trees to do it or must have been very tall and strong. It would have to be at least 11 plus feet tall. Again, this is a brief synopsis. It really annoyed the shit out of me though that it took my Pepsi, then left a round, clean, flat rock in the middle of my hood. How interesting is that one? How interesting is that one? You got more to send in, man. You know where to email at share my story at howtohunt.com. If you're still following the channel, lots of people are going to be interested to hear that. A rock for a soda. Sounds like a little bit of a lopsided trade, doesn't it? Steve, my name is Steve Adams, and I've had an experience with a Sasquatch in the North Georgia mountains in Kohata Management Area. The beast caught a doe and killed it with ease. I was in a deer stand about 15 feet in a tree, and after killing the doe, it started walking towards me. It walked about 10 feet and stopped, looking straight up at me. If his stare could kill, I'd be dead. He then opened his mouth and let out a loud scream. I remember seeing his canine teeth very distinctly. He then turned slightly and started moving up the ridge, carrying the doe like we would carry a small duffel bag. 
I watched him walk over the ridge and heard him scream once again. I sat in the stand for at least two hours, afraid he would be waiting for me because somehow his stare and scream seemed to be letting me know that he did not want me here. I now live in Florida. I'm trying to get a group together to start doing more research on the Florida species known as the skunk ape. I've started a channel and hope to get a few people interested enough to discuss the subject and even may maybe go on an expedition in the Ocala Forest or Everglades to camp and research the skunk ape. Ever since my experience in 2009, I've been doing my own research and I would love to get together with a few people in Florida to discuss and compare thoughts and experiences. I wish you more success and hope you stay safe. If you have any ideas on how I can get my channel up and going, I'd appreciate any advice. Thanks again, Steve Evans. I think I read this. I'm pretty sure that sounds familiar. We've read that one, you guys, and answered him. Um, all right, let's get this one more, and then i got to jump in the Zodiac and carry on. Strange encounter in the forest. In February of 86, I traveled from Saginaw to Ravenna, Michigan, or Ravenna, Michigan, to visit a girl named Patty I'd recently met while working on Mackinac Island for the season. Patty's family was large, with a total of 11 siblings. Her parents allowed me to stay at their home that weekend. That Saturday, I helped her cousins collect seasoned firewood very close to the Manistee Forest. We loaded the flatbed trailer and hauled it out of the woods with the John Deere tractor. It had been an unseasonably warm that day. It had been unseasonably warm that day. It was in the 50s, and most of the snow had melted away. I was carrying, a, carrying on a conversation with Patty's Aunt Lorna and Uncle Jim whilst catching my breath, I asked if they had ever heard tree knocks in the forest on their property. They both looked at each other and then Jim said, most people do not talk about those kinds of topics in fear of ridicule from the community. I said I understood, but did not care who said It's a crazy ass sound. There's something's over there. I'm gonna grab the video camera out of the Zodiac and walk over there in a minute. It's around the point, it's an animal, whatever it is, it's something. That's a crazy ass sound. Let me get through this and I'm gonna go over there. They both looked at each other and then Jim said, most people do not talk about those kinds of topics and fear of ridicule from the community. I said I understood, but not care who said what, it was the truth. There was about an hour of sunlight left and it was nice and warm still. Cousin Dave said he would be back to meet up with me before sunset, so I had about 45 minutes to it. Whatever that is, is pissed off. I gotta get over there. There was about an hour of sunlight left and it was nice and warm still. Cousin Dave said he would be back to meet up with me before sunset. So I had about 45 minutes to explore the forest. We went our separate ways and I had not walked 10 feet when I suddenly heard a very loud tree knock <clears throat> that was incredibly close to me. <clears throat> I looked down and saw the perfect branch to use to reply with a solid tree knock back. I just thought it was Dave goofing on me, so away I swung and really connected on the closest tree near me. The tree turned out to be fairly hollow due, a due to a lightning strike in its youth, I guessed. There was a long narrow slot big enough for me to slip into the tree, which I did, and I waited to see if I could hear Dave coming and I would surprise him. I leaned back and the sun shone through the slot warming me. I just stood there relaxing waiting for Dave. I heard some rustling of pine tree needle. I heard the rustling. Sorry, my tension's getting. I heard some rustling of the pine tree needle forest floor, but nothing really that loud or enough for me to ex exit the tree comfort. The shadows began to get longer and I could feel the colder air be beginning to take over. My t-shirt was not enough to protect me. I had, 
My eyes closed and I felt the sun on my face when suddenly I feel the cool air and the sun was gone. It must be a cloud, I thought. I opened my eyes and I saw a dark figure passing by. I thought again out loud, the sun came back. And I thought again, a cloud. Okay, sorry, let me read that again. I opened my eyes and saw a dark figure passing by and I thought again, a cloud. The sun came back and just as I did, just as it did, I looked down towards a sudden rustling and saw a very muscular lower leg pass by. It was covered in reddish brown hair. I mean hair too, not fur. The hair was hanging down about five to six inches and I could see in between the locks of hair to the skin. It was gray color. The calf muscle was enormous. I just cannot forget the size of it. Like bigger than my head big. I began to pack a bit and I wanted out of the tree when I heard a very deep and low huffing noise very close to me. It actually sounded like someone was laughing. It was a slow rhythmic like laughter, like one would hear a grandfather whilst playing with his grandkids. Then there's a comma and nothing else. Shit. All right, well, let's hope that the author of this text here, this email, whatever you want to call it, uh, is still following this channel and reads this or hears me speaking right now and emails us back with a follow-up to that story. That's one hell of an experience and not a good one. You can't get more vulnerable feeling, I would imagine, than being inside a hollowed out tree and having something like that outside of it. Anyway, I'm gonna go slip back to the Zodiac. I'm gonna grab the, the video camera. This is a GoPro I'm using. Remember that one I bought for doing this? And uh, I'm gonna sneak around the point and find out what the hell is making that noise and hopefully videotape it. Just sounds like something pissed off. It's a weird sound. All right, here I go. I caught the sound. It's over on that island. Sounds like it's in the timber. I got. I think I got it on the other camera. It's right there. The creepiest freaking sound I've ever heard in my freaking life. I don't know what it is. I'll wait here for a little bit longer and see if I can't uh, catch it. I've been scanning it with the video zoomed in. I can't see shit. That sound was freaking crazy. I think I got it on the camera on the Sony. <laughs> That's crazy. There's a boat over there. And uh, the rock that I was sitting on making this video when I came over here to make to see if I could capture what's making that sound I glance back here's a great big bear walking along the beach going right behind where I was just sitting with my back to it videotaping and I videotaped the bear on the Sony camera anyway I can't load content from the Sony onto my phone if I do manage to get this loaded onto the YouTube channel from here with my phone so just so you know that's what's going on and I will uh, I'll share it again I'll share the Sony capture of this audio later and hopefully it does it again and I catch it clear. I got the camera right here, ready to go. The adventure life's fun, I'll tell you what.